Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem Bond 03. This one is going to test your knowledge of straight line amortization, specifically of a bond premium. Let's take a look. On January 1st, Flyer Corps issued 200,000 worth of 12% 10-year bonds for 208,000 cash. Record Flyer Corps' December 31 journal entry for the first interest payments and straight line amortization of the premium. In addition, beyond the journal entry, just to make sure you have a good understanding, ask yourself if you understand how the amortization affects Flyer Corps' borrowing cost on the income statement and bond presentation on the balance sheet. All right, take a moment, pause the video, try this out for yourself, and when you're ready, come on back. I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. We're recording a journal entry at 1231. And what I'm going to do for illustrative purposes is I'm going to actually record it in two separate pieces, and then I'll merge it together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to deal specifically with the interest. So I'm going to focus on number one here. If you make an interest payment on December 31st, what would that look like? Well, you've got a $200,000 bond and it is paying 12% interest. That was all given in the problem. So if I get my calculator out, 200,000 times 0.12 works out to 24,000 per year. So this is 24,000 interest per year. We issued the bond on January 1st, so it is a year later. I mean, technically we have a day to go, but for simplicity, we're just treating it as what we do at year end here. So you have racked up 24,000 worth of interest expense. And it does say the first interest payment. So assuming we really are paying this, well, that's cash out, 24,000. If you were simply accruing this, not paying it, you would record interest payable here instead of cash. All right, so that's the interest part of it. Now, we also have to deal with amortizing the premium, specifically straight line. Notice that we received $208,000 in cash for this bond. But the bond has a face value of only $200,000. So that means we received an $8,000 premium on the bond. Now it is a 10-year bond. So we divide this by 10, and that means that we are going to amortize this premium at $800 per year, okay? So that over the whole 10-year span, we end up amortizing the full 8,000. The way this works, if you think about a premium, a premium, when it is established, is a credit. So for example, um, when we issued this bond, I know we didn't have to do this journal entry, but when we issued this bond, it would have looked like this, cash, 208, BP, 200, premium, 8,000. So notice the premium is a credit, right? Amortizing reduces the premium. So to reduce it, we are going to have to debit it. So I'm going to get this out the way here. And for our 1231 journal entry, I'm going to put a debit to premium on bond payable for that $800 that first year. Now, what this premium does, because investors gave us more money than we are actually going to have to pay them back. This premium is saving us cost. And the way we recognize saving us cost is we are going to reduce the interest expense by $800. Now, for illustrative purposes, I showed this as two separate journal entries so you would understand what's going on. But in reality, what happens as a result of this, we're going to go ahead and merge these together now, I'm going to move this cash down. Doo, doo, doo. I'm going to go ahead and put this premium up in my debits. And notice we already have interest expense in that first journal entry. Now we're just lowering it by $800. And so this is going to become 23.2. And I'm just going to get rid of 
that. So now I've merged the two pieces of this journal entry. I've merged the interest piece with the amortization piece. And this gets us now to describing how the amortization, uh, amortization affects Firecore's borrowing costs. Remember, we would have recorded interest of 24000 on our income statement, interest expense, 24000 But as a result of this amortization, notice now we're only recording interest expense of 23200 We're recording less interest expense. And this is how we're going to recognize, essentially, that money saved as part of getting more cash up front than we're going to have to pay for on the back end. I also asked you um, to describe how this would affect the bond presentation on the balance sheet. So bonds on the balance sheet are typically shown at their, their book value or their carrying value. You have the bond payable for the face amount, in this case, $200,000. You would put add premium beneath that for $8,000, and that would give you a book value or carrying value of 208. Now, this is absent the amortization, right? This is what would have happened. But now that we've amortized $800 of that premium, look what happens. This premium is going to reduce to $7,200, which is then also going to reduce the book value or carrying value to $207,200. The value of the bond has gone down as a result of amortizing the premium. And that's exactly what should happen because the premium will then go down another $800, another $800, another $800, another $800. And every time it goes down, this book value is going to go down till ultimately at maturity, the book value of this bond will only be the $200,000. And at that point, you're ready to pay it back. All right, that was it. That was your test of premium amortization under the straight line method. It's just as important to understand why you're doing it and what this does from a financial stamp statement standpoint as it is to understand the actual journal entries that go into it. Um, hope you found this helpful and I hope you join me for another video.